Mobile gaming is a hot market right now. With mobile technology improving every year, mobile gaming has exploded in popularity around the world. Right now, the most popular genre to play on phones and tablets are MOBA games, which have managed to thrive in markets where console and PC gaming is less popular or even impossible. Games like Mobile Legends, Arena of Valor, and Riot Games Wild Rift are a few examples of titles that have managed to dominate the market. But there was one game that flew under the radar. It didn't have in-your-face YouTube advertisements or clickbait ad banners, but in its time, it was one of the most innovative titles on the market. Its graphics, controls, and game design were state-of-the-art, and it had huge esports viability and a dedicated player base. Unfortunately, once its developers handed the reins over to a new publisher, all that work was undone almost overnight. This is the story of the rise and fall of Vainglory. Vainglory is a mobile MOBA launched on iOS in 2014. Making use of iOS 6, the iPhone 6 was the only phone powerful enough to run the game. Developed by Super Evil Megacorp, a startup led by former Rockstar, Riot Games, Blizzard, and Insomniac developers, Vainglory was created with the goal of building a unique gameplay experience and doing away with the microtransactions that had dominated the mobile landscape up until this point. Setting itself apart from the competition, Vainglory utilized a two-finger touch system, which encouraged laying your device on a flat surface and playing with your index fingers, rather than holding the device in your hands and playing with your thumbs. Doing away with the faux analog sticks that were touchy and covered a big portion of the screen, Vainglory utilized the entire display so that players could actually see what was happening. For example, to attack, all players had to do was tap the enemy with one finger and they would move towards them, while the other finger was free to cast abilities, communicate with teammates, place wards, or look at items. It was clean, responsive, and much less frustrating than other MOBAs at the time. Also unlike other MOBAs, Vainglory went for a smaller scale 3v3 map, which only had a single lane for players and minions, and a jungle with monsters to kill. This was a break from the traditional MOBA format, which was 5v5 maps with three lanes. Staying in line with the genre, Vainglory had towers, creeps that players can kill for gold, an item shop where players can buy items, and bases that need to be destroyed in order to win. To keep the gameplay fast and exciting, Vainglory cut out most of the excess gameplay associated with the MOBA genre. You know, 10 minutes of laning, CSing, constantly warding, and built a streamlined experience that would only take 10 to 15 minutes if one team was dominating, or 20 to 30 minutes if it was a close contest. The game's heroes have defined roles and playstyles. In 3v3s, heroes are divided into junglers, laners, and roamers. Junglers have abilities specifically designed to deal with jungle monsters and scrap with the enemy jungler. Laners are designed to control the center of the map and earn gold. And roamers are the support heroes, who help out wherever they see fit. An example of your typical laner is Baptiste, the melee mage. He has a passive ability, called Reap, that lets him heal off of his basic attacks and buffs his base stats once he lands a certain number of hits. His other three abilities include Bad Mojo, an AoE attack that does more damage to enemy heroes, Ordained, which traps enemies in an area and stuns anyone who tries to leave, and Fearsome Shade, which causes enemies to run away and also damages them. As far as MOBA characters go, Baptiste is pretty standard, and his kit is geared towards fighting and lane control. The game utilizes some unique jungle mechanics that separates it from its peers. The jungle has a jungle boss called the Gold Miner, which spawns in at 5 minutes and can be killed for gold. The more time the gold miner is left alone and allowed to mine, the more gold players get from killing him. At 15 minutes, the miner is replaced with the Kraken, a jungle boss that requires the whole team to take down. Once defeated, the Kraken joins the team that killed it and helps to take down the enemy team's towers. For the most part, defeating the Kraken usually means a win for that team. With all that out of the way, let's look at how Vainglory got popular in the first place. When it first launched in 2014, the game was praised for its innovative take on the MOBA genre. Built on the developer's own evil engine, the game was met with international acclaim as it had a low barrier for entry, it was free to play, and it kept players hooked with its fast match time and all of its content, from skins to new heroes, being unlockable by grinding the game instead of bought with real money. 
Sure, you could buy things with real money and secondary currency, but most things could be unlocked by grinding out 30 or so games and never having to spend any actual cash. The game was also definitely not play to win, and made a point of staying away from the shady business models that other mobile games tended to follow. With so much praise, eventually, Vainglory made its way to Android, Mac computers, and even Steam. In early 2015, Vainglory had its first esports push, and held its first world championship in 2016. Funded by the developers themselves, the first world's prize pool came in at $175,000. The title even had investment from top esports orgs like Misfits, TSM, and Fnatic. But around this time in 2016, cracks were already starting to show, and the developers had to reconsider its philosophy on monetization. The fall of Vainglory started slowly, and quickly accelerated when SEMC handed off publishing duties to Rogue Games. Much of these problems revolved around monetization, which Vainglory had very little of. After its initial launch and the years following, the game offered skins and other cosmetic items which players could buy, but with a robust crafting system and the availability of in-game currency, players could grind out pretty much whatever they wanted without spending a dime. SCMC also invested heavily into esports with little return on those investments. The company reportedly sunk millions into venues and hotels and were hemorrhaging money. All of this expenditure with no return forced SEMC to discontinue their esports ventures in 2018. To try and turn a profit, the devs decided that the skin system needed a change. A new crafting system was added to make grinding for specific skins harder as earning skins became randomized. But most players kept to their usual habits of playing rather than paying. SEMC even introduced other cosmetics like hats, a battle pass system, and chests that players could open for talents that gave certain power-ups in specific game modes, but nothing seemed to help. A new 5v5 mode was added to increase the player base and appeal to a wider mobile audience, and the game even became available cross-platform on Steam, but none of these changes did enough. Part of the issue is due to the lack of advertising. Unlike other mobile MOBAs that advertise their games everywhere online, Vainglory did very little in terms of marketing. The game had one commercial dedicated to itself, and the rest were lumped in with Apple products and collaborations. Most advertising for the game came through esports, word of mouth, and that one time that PewDiePie played the game on his channel. No. You did, bro! Ah! No! What? Where did he come from? Seeing their first big title in Dire Straits, SEMC decided to move on and apply the lessons they learned developing Vainglory to another title. To lessen the workload, SEMC entered a publishing agreement with Rogue Games in 2019. This gave Rogue the reins to the free-to-play MOBA, putting them in charge of servers outside of China, and let them dictate new skins and hero development. In that same time frame, the company's founders left altogether. For a while, it looked like things might be okay for Vainglory. Rogue Games looked to be more stable than SEMC, and the game was in a pretty good place, all things considered. But just a few months later, seemingly out of nowhere, Rogue Games shut down Vainglory's servers outside of China and effectively killed the game for a few days. It wasn't until SEMC turned the servers back on that things were sorted out. Months after the incident, Rogue ended up apologizing for the sudden shutdown, citing Vainglory's high server costs during the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic as justification for pulling the plug. SEMC managed to salvage their title for a time, but changes had to be made. In a developer update and Reddit AMA, the higher-ups at SEMC explained that Rogue Games still held the publishing rights to Vainglory, and that everyone had to honor whatever decisions they made. So, SEMC had to come up with a compromise. The team ultimately came up with Vainglory Community Edition. Essentially, Vainglory would be given into the hands of its players, who would receive all of the necessary tools to host their own servers and run events without SEMC or Rogue Gaming interfering. The ability to purchase servers and host matches was made available to everyone, but there were a few caveats that came along with that. Some features were removed altogether. Ranked matchmaking, ELO, and game history would be lost to time. Certain in-game features like chat would be unavailable as well. However, there are also a few perks, including players having access to all in-game cosmetics. On top of this, server hosts were given complete access to all game modes and balancing, meaning that players could make the game essentially whatever they wanted. SCMC worked for about three months on this iteration of the game, sacrificing nights and weekends in the name of giving their community something to remember them by. 
In their last update to fans, SCMC gave a farewell and well wishes to those who had already started their own community servers. Outside of China, Vainglory is a shell of its former self. The game had all the makings of a classic when it first released, with innovative controls and graphics that were unparalleled, but sadly, it just wasn't sustainable. In hindsight, Vainglory's decline was inevitable. Another startup game developer with a great game idea, but little in the way of monetization. These issues were compounded by a new publisher entering the picture, and a global pandemic all but sealing the game's demise. Still, through a small, dedicated community, you can download Vainglory today and find a game through their community servers. It's not the same titan it once was, but Vainglory will remain a testament to what mobile gaming innovation looks like and a reminder of what could have been. Uh, there are just so many devices out there, right, that uh, somebody, some game, is going to hit it so big that it's not just going to be uh, an eSport when you're talking about billions of people. At that point, it's just like a uh, mainstream sport. So I don't know if Vainglory uh, will be the game, but I'm confident that there will be a game out there that uh, connects with a wide enough range of an audience that uh, it's a huge success as a mobile eSport. Thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on mobile gaming? Is there a space in the esports world for games played on phones? Or should publishers focus on PC and console first? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason, B, Brendan, Foxy, Iron, Lyra, Mav, Nate, Nathan, Sierra, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters and an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, and Mookie for being Diamond supporters. We appreciate you all. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.